This week's project is a fabulous resist felted beret. So it just started getting cold here in the NYC, and the other day I went to my hat rack to grab my favorite brown beret. To my extreme horror, I discovered something crazy had happened to it, and it was all but ruined. That hat was super special to me. It was my great-grandmother Mitchell's. She used to wear a beret almost every single day. So in honor of my Gigi Ma, I decided to learn how to felt my own beret. I researched the internet high and low, learned many things about wet felting, but not really much on how to make a beret. Then, I found a great website with a bunch of awesome wet felting videos, and lo and behold, one on how to make a beret. Thanks to Terry of FeltingLessons.com. I also videotape my process. Take a look and let me know what you think. DIY Earth or Life. For my hat, I'm using 21 micron brown merino wool roving that I picked up at my local yarn store. Once you have your wool, the first step is to make a relief out of corrugated cardboard. This one has a radius of 8 inches. It's going to shrink about 20% when completed. Next, make two even piles of roving, one for each side of your hat. If when you're laying out the wool on the relief, you decide you need more, add the same amount of wool to each pile. You also need a piece of small mesh tool and some bubble wrap. If your bubble wrap pieces are small, tape them together with duct tape on the smooth side of the wrap. Okay. Time to lay out your felt. Pull drafts from the long piece of roving by gently pulling between your fingers and the palm of your hand. For the first layer, lay the drafts all in the same direction. Then for the second layer, lay the drafts going in the opposite direction. Let the wool hang over the sides of the relief about two inches, and you want your drafts to be relatively thin. It's better to have a bunch of thin layers than a few thick layers. Keep adding layers to the relief, changing the direction each layer. You're finished when you've done about six layers, but make sure to check for any holes or weak spots. Now lay your tool on top of the wool. Make sure you position it so there's enough to cover the other side as well. Then lay the bubble wrap on top, bubble side down. Use another piece of cardboard to help you flip it all over. Fold the overhanging wool onto this side of the relief and start adding your other pile of wool the same way as the first side. But don't let the wool overlap the side this time. Just place it right up to the edge. When you're done adding layers, cover this side with the tool as well. Stay tuned for more from the magical world of wet felting. You're watching Threadbanger. Welcome back. Next, heat up six cups of water as hot as you can stand to touch. Then add about a fourth of a cup of soap to the water. Get out an old plastic container and fill it up with your water mixture. Now you are ready to start the felting process. Liberally apply water to the first side, saturate it by pressing down on the wool with your hands. You know you've added too much water if when you press down, water pools between your fingers. Just pat it with the towel to rid the extra water. Once the first side is nice and wet, do the same to the other side. You will start to notice that the wool is a little baggy on the sides of the relief. Gently push the wool inward so it's flush with the edge of the relief. There will be wrinkles, but don't worry. Just gently massage around them and they will start to disappear. Add more water mixture as needed. Then do the same to the other side. Once all the wrinkles are gone, you can rub with more pressure and a little bit more elbow grease. You're done when both sides pass the tent test. Pinch the fabric, and if it forms a tent and doesn't pull away from itself, you are ready to start the fulling process. First, you need some bamboo mats. Place the mats on top of one side and roll everything up. Take
Tie it all together with some stretchy material and roll it back and forth about five times. Your form will already be starting to buckle when you unroll it. Just change the position of the relief and roll it up again. Flip it over and roll some more. It'll shrink in the direction it's being rolled in, so try to do it in all directions so it keeps its shape. When it starts to buckle too much, it's time to remove the relief. Use a circle shape with a diameter of 5 to 6 inches and cut around it lightly with an X-Acto knife. But be very careful not to cut through the other side. Then if you need to, use some scissors to cut whatever you missed with the X-Acto. Saturate that rough edge with the water mixture and start massaging with gentle short strokes in the direction of the cut. After a bit, you can start rubbing with a bit more pressure. Then remove the cardboard from the middle. It'll be saturated with water and easy to bend and take out. Add some water to the inside and massage a bit in there. Now, you're going to do a little bit more fulling. Again, make sure to do it in all directions and on both sides. To remove that crease, just add water and massage it out. Once everything's to your liking, add a bunch more water and hand fold the hat by rubbing it against itself. Rinse it all out with warm water, then rinse it with cold water. Let it soak for about 15 minutes in 2 quarts of cold water and 2 tablespoons of white vinegar. Once it's dry, you are ready to rock your new hat. So this was my first time wet felting and I really enjoyed it. It's said that this technique is the oldest form of textile making, so I'm super excited I know how to do it now. Again, thanks to Terry for all her awesome videos. Definitely check them out at feltinglessons.com. My hat came out just a little too thick and the head hole had to be stretched a lot for it to fit. But I think it's because it was too thick and I may have felted it just a little too much. And you also may have noticed me referring to the relief a lot. It's actually known as a resist, but I think relief still works. Well, that's it for this week. And if anyone knows what it is that happened to my grandma's hat so I know not to do that again to a hat like that, that would be awesome. Just let me know in the comments. Till next time, see you later.